Okay, welcome to IQ online classes. So today we are going to do atomic structure. On atomic structure, we are going to start with both module. Then we go to electronic configuration. From there, we we'll do up to diagrams. So let's start with this both module. This both atomic module. So according to this board, he will say it. The electrons moves around the nucleus in circular orbits. So they move like this in circular orbits. Let's say this is the this is the nucleus here. So so here we say the electrons move in circular orbits. Let's say this is one, this is n1. Okay, let's say this is n1, n2, n3, n4. So I want to him we said these electrons will move around the nucleus in circular in circular orbits. So here, how do you find the energy of a photon? So how do you calculate the energy of the photon? So the energy of the photon, this energy of the photon here, energy of the photon. So the energy of the photon is equals to H V. What is this H? This is what Planck's constant. What is this V? This is the what? The frequency. The frequency. So what is the value for this Planck's constant? So the value for this Planck's constant is equals to H is equals to 6.626070 multiplied by 10 to the power negative 34 joules. So when you are told to find the energy of the photon, just say E is equals to H is the Planck's constant multiplied by the frequency. So, when electrons here, when electrons fall from this high energy level to the lower energy level, meaning they emit the energy, they emit energy. When they fall from the high energy level to the lower energy level, meaning they emit the energy. But when they move from the lower energy level to the highest energy level to the high energy level, they absorb the energy. So when they move from the high energy level to the lower energy level, they emit the energy. And when they move from the lower to the higher, they absorb the energy. They absorb the energy. So, what if we are told now to calculate the energy released, okay? The energy released, let me, let me put a question here. Calculate the energy <coughs> released when an electron An electron force from let me say N4, N4 to what? To N2. So here's the question here. Calculate the energy released when an electron falls from N4 to N2. So here, you are seeing that this is falling from the higher energy level to the lower energy level. So it is from the high energy level to the lowest energy level. So meaning you expect the energy to be negative. You expect the energy to be negative. So which formula do you use when you're calculating this? So the formula that we are going to use here is this one. We will say E to the energy released is equal to negative 2.1178 multiplied by 10 to the power negative 18j. Open, you say 1 over n final squared minus 1 over n initial squared. So this value is constant here. So this value is constant. And you know the reason it's negative because it's falling it's for, for from the higher energy level to the what? The higher, the lower energy level. So here, so the formula will be negative 2, 1.7. Okay, let me put it down here. So it will be E is equal to negative 2.17. 8 multiplied by 10 to the power negative 18 joules. So, what is the end final? The end final, we are moving from this is the initial, this is the what? The final. So, I'm moving from this to this. So, meaning this is the initial, this is the what? The final. So, what is the end final? The end final is this 2. So, here to be 1 over 2 squared minus 1 over the final, which is the initial, which is what? 4 over 4 squared. So here, when you, when you do the calculations, what is the answer here? When you do the calculations, so here to be, so here to be, E is equals to negative 
4.178 multiplied by 10 to the power negative 18, 1 over 4 minus 1 over 16. So when, when you do the calculation just inside here, what is the answer? What is the answer here? That is 1.78 times 10 to the power negative 18. What is the answer here inside here? 12 over 16, is it? Yeah, okay, what's the answer? Mm. What is the answer? <laughs> 3 over 16. 3 over 16? Mm. I, want, I, want, I want the actual value right now. Divide it 3 over 16. What is 0 0.8? 8. 8. 0 0.8. 1 divided 3 over 13. Yes. Is it 3 over 13? 16, eh? which is 0.1875. Uh, 875. Okay. Then multiply this time this. Negative 4.875. Negative 4.875 times 10 to the power negative 9. 75 times 10 to the power negative 19. Negative 19 joules. 10. So this is how you calculate the energy. The energy released when an electron falls from one energy level to another energy level. So this is how you calculate the energy released. Right. So let's move forward here. So let's move forward here. We are done. So, so let's move forward here. So calculate the energy released when an electron falls from this energy level to another energy level. So from this energy level to another energy level. Okay. So from here, let's move to this here. Let's move to this. So you are the first energy level. So I'm just stretching them out. The first energy level. You have the second energy level, the third energy level, the fourth energy what? level. So let's say this is N1, N2. N3 and N4. So, when electrons fall to the first energy level, it can be from anywhere. It can be from here, it can be from here to, it can be from here. Uh, when electrons fall to the first energy level, we call it Riemann series. When electrons fall to the first energy level, it can be from here, it can be from here. As long as they fall to the first energy level, we call that one as what? Riemann's series. And this Riemann series will do with the ultraviolet, ultraviolet emission. This ultra, ultraviolet. Okay. So they will do with ultraviolet emission. So what about when electrons force to the second energy level? What about when electrons force to the, this second energy level? It can be from anywhere. They can fall from here. From here. So when electrons fall to the second energy level, we call it Baumer series. When electrons fall to the second energy level, that's what we call Baumer series. Series. And this one will do with what? This borite. This is this borite here. This borite. So what about when electrons fall to the third energy level? Can we from here? Or from anywhere. When electrons fall to the third energy level, it calls passion series here. This is passion series. That is passion series. And this one, this one will do with infrared. So this is infrared. This is infrared emission. Infrared emission. So so we know like for example when you when you get to force from maybe N4 to N2. So meaning this N2 is the final here, and you know the type of emission. So they ask what type of emission here. So you know that N2 being the final meaning that's Bauma series, meaning the emission will go at this borite. So when they ask you which one is associated with this borite, infrared, ultraviolet, you just need to understand this. If it falls from N4, to N3, N3 being the final, you know that the kind of emission is what? That is infrared. So this is how you find this. This is how you find this. So we move to the next stage. We move to the next stage here. We move to the next stage. 
So, so before you leave this, let's let me give you some formulas here. Let me give you some formulas. So, how do you calculate the wavelength? So here I said the first one is the speed of light is equal to what? The wavelength multiplied by what? The frequency. So from here you can make the wavelength the subject of what? Formula. So this is the what? The speed of what? The speed of light. <coughs> and this one, the wavelength. What about this one? The frequency. So, another formula for, for wavelength when you are given the mass and the velocity. So, another formula for wavelength when you are given the mass and the velocity. So, say the wavelength, which is lambda, the wavelength is equal to the flux constant over the mass multiplied by the, the velocity. So, this is the one, the flux constant. The flux constant here. When here you see the what m is the mass, this one is the what the velocity. So you need to master these two formulas, they are very important here. So almost all the calculations on wavelength, on the frequency, the, the flux constant, the mass, they will come from these two important formulas here. So you need to understand these formulas. So as a mass, you need to understand this formula. You need to understand the formula for energy of the photon. The energy released when an electron falls, so you need to understand those formulas then. So let's move on here to, to quantum numbers here. Let's move to quantum numbers. So let's now move to quantum numbers. So let's move to quantum numbers here. So, so, here we have four types of quantum numbers. We have four types of quantum numbers. The first type of quantum numbers, they we call them what? Principal quantum numbers. So the first one are what? Principal quantum numbers. Principal quantum numbers. So, so these principal quantum numbers, they will describe the energy levels and the and the size. So these they'll do they with the energy level, the energy levels, and the what? And the size. So, so when you have to describe these principal quantum numbers, so meaning they'll do the energy level and the what? And the size. What about the second type of quantum numbers? You have there as Newton, as Newton quantum numbers. As Newton quantum numbers. So these as Newton quantum numbers, they will deal with the shape. So these they only deal with the what? With the shape. With the shape. And these principal quantum numbers they are represented by a letter M. These as Newton quantum quantum numbers they are represented by a letter what? L. So so how do you find these as Newton quantum numbers from the principal quantum numbers. So to find this L, to be L is equal to N minus 1. And this N represents the principal quantum numbers. So for example, for example here, for example, if they say N here, they say N is equal to 1, then what is L? What is the mutual quantum number? So L equals to the N minus what? 1, which is equal to what? 0. So when n is equal to 1, meaning as Newton quantum number is equal to what? 0. So what about when n is equal to 2? So n is equal to 2, we use the same formula say L is equal to n minus what? 1. So in this case, what is n? 2 minus 1. What is the answer? It's 1. So what about when n is equal to 3? When n is equal to 3? When n is equal to 3, l is equal to what? L is equal to, to 2. <coughs> so they go on and they go on. So this is how you find the, the admin of quantum numbers from, from the principal quantum numbers. 
So, so here we say the things as we talk about numbers, they deal with the shape. They deal with the shape. So each of these, they have, they have a shape. So here on as we talk about numbers, you use letters like S, P, D, and F. So here say 0, 1, 2, 3. But this, this S orbital can hold up how many electrons? Two electrons. This P orbital can hold up how many? Six electrons. This D can hold up to ten electrons. What about this F? F can hold up what? Forty electrons. So, and each of these has got its own shape. S has got its own shape, P has got its own shape, D has got its own shape, and F has got its own complicated shape. So what is the shape for this S? So the shape for S just something like this. Just a straightforward shape. What about the shape of P? Just more like a small flower like this. It can be in this way, also in this way. So what about this for D? What about for D? For D, the shape will be a bit complicated, so it will be something like this. It will be something like this. This is for D. And for and for F, F has got a complicated, a complicated shape. S has got a complicated shape, but make sure you know these three shapes. So the first shape is for S, which is more like a zero. This one is just like this. This one more like a flower, and this F has got a complicated shape. So these they deal with the shape. So let's go to the next type of quantum numbers. Let's go to the next type of quantum numbers. So the next type of quantum numbers is, is what you call the what? The magnetic quantum numbers. Magnetic. Magnetic quantum numbers. <coughs> magnetic quantum numbers. So these magnetic quantum numbers are represented by ML. So these magnetic quantum numbers then they do with orbital orientation. Orbital orientation. So this orbital, you describe them like this, they do with orbital orientation means. Orientation. And these Magnetic quantum numbers, they come from this as little quantum number. For example, let's say when L is equal to 1, what is the magnetic quantum number? So meaning this magnetic quantum number is ML, ML will end between negative 1 and 1. And 1. So when, when L is equal to 2, this ML will be equal to, they will end between negative 2 and positive 2, which is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. When L is equal to 3, this the range between negative 3 and positive 2. This is negative 3, negative 2, negative. This is negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. They go on and they go on. They go on and go on. So, so these they do orbital orientation. So these is orbital orientation. So what is the next step of quantum numbers? So the next type of quantum number, the, so okay, that is spin quantum numbers. Spin quantum numbers. Spin quantum numbers. So, so these spin quantum numbers, them they do the direction. So these they do the direction. They do the direction and this they will range between negative half and positive half. Negative half to positive half. So these are represented by MS, which is magnetic spin numbers. So these are magnetic spin numbers. So these they will range between negative half and positive, positive half. Negative half and positive half. So for us to understand these magnetic quantum numbers, we need to understand what we, what, what we call electronic configuration. What we call electronic configuration and optodata. So we need to understand. 
We need to understand electronic configuration. We need to understand electronic configuration. So from here, let me go to electronic configuration so that we can understand certain principles like up bound principle, hands rule, and Paulo's principle of exclusion there, so that we can understand such things there. So let's do electronic configuration. <coughs> electronic configuration. So let's do electronic configuration. So on electronic configuration, we need to understand that the S will up to hold up to two electrons. This one hold up to two electrons. Therefore, we will go to two S, two electrons. P can hold up to how many? Six electrons. Then you go to three S, three P. 3p, 3, 3g, from 3g you go to 4s, 4p, 4d, 4f, they go on and they go on. So here, this is how you do them. They move in diagonal like this. From 2p now they start moving in diagonal. So they move in this way. So meaning here, you move from this first s level, you go to 2s, 2p, then you go to 3s. Then you go to 3P. From 3P, don't go down to 3G. You need to go to 4S. Then from 4S, that's when you go to 3G. When you go to what? 4P. So let's add here, say, 5S, 5P, 5G, and 5 what? 5F. So meaning here, from here you go here. From here you go here. So meaning here, from 3G, you need to go to 4P. From 4P, you go to 5S. That's when you go to 4D. Then from 4D, you go to 5P. That's when you go to 4F. So you need to understand this. You need to understand this. So let's let's start an electronic configuration for n of the element. Which element do we start with? Which element do we start with? Let's start with aluminium. How many? Aluminium has got how many electrons? Aluminium has got how many electrons? That, that is 13. 18. Okay, let's just get the number of electrons. Right? So here we use the number of electrons. So aluminium has got how many electrons? 13 electrons. So we need to do the electronic configuration for aluminium. So you start with 1s. So you so start with 1s. One, this 1s one can hold up how many electrons? 2. two. So 2. Then from here go to what? 2s. 2s can hold up how many? 2, two electrons. From 2s go to, to 2p. 2p P can hold up, up how many? 6. six. This is 2p to the power 2, 6. And you should be counting. This is 1, 2, 3, 6, 4, 6, 10. Four, from there, where do you go? From 2p, you go to what? 3s. 3s can hold up how many? Up to 2. So many we are 12. So from 3s, we go to 3p. So in this case, we just remain with what? 1 to which 13. Meaning this p, which is supposed to hold 6, we hold how many? 1. So 3p to the power 1. So this is the electronic configuration for aluminium. So this is how you like the electronic configuration. So the electronic configuration for aluminium is this one. Okay? So let's do the next example. Let's do the next example here. Calcium. Okay. You get that of calcium. Okay. Calcium. Okay. <coughs> so let's start. Okay, calcium is how many electrons? Ten. Ten. So Calcium. So I say 20 is calcium as good how many? 20. 20 electrons, right? Yes. 20 electrons. So, so, so here I start. 1s can hold up how many? 2. two. From 2s, two from 1s, go to 2s. 2s can hold up how many? 2. Then go to what? 2p can hold up how many? 6. Then from there go to 3s, 3s can hold up to how many? 2. Then we go to 3p, 3p can hold up to how many? 6. Are we counting? This is, this is 10, this is 18, we are to how many? 2. Then from 3, 3p go to what? 4s, 4s can hold up to how many? 2. This is 12, 
620. So this is the electronic configuration for what? For aluminium. For calcium. For calcium. This is the electronic configuration for calcium. So, so here, almost all the elements, the electronic configuration just simple and straightforward. But we have two exceptions. We have two exceptions, copper and what? Copper and chromium, those are two exceptions. Those are two exceptions. So let's do for copper and, and chromium. Those are two exceptions. The electronic configuration won't be simple, won't be straightforward. Won't be straightforward. So let's do for copper and uh, aluminium. But for these other elements, just be straightforward, just follow this order. But for copper and chromium, don't be. So, so for copper has got 29 electrons. Copper has got 29 electrons and chromium has got 24 electrons. Okay, so let's copper to see. Copper has got how many electrons? Let's say 29 electrons. And we're told to write the electronic configuration for this copper. Let's start. 1s to the power t. 2. 2s to the power t. 2. Then we go to where? 2p to the power t. 6. From 2p you go to what? 3s to the power. From 3s you go to what? 6. From 3p, from p where do you go? We go to 4s. 4s to the power t. Then we go to what? 3d. So in this case, let's count 2, 4, 6, 10. This is 20. Yeah? Then we are remaining with how many? 9. And this d optical can hold up to how many? 10. So, so here we have what? 9. So on opto diagrams, on opto diagrams, so the opto diagram for this D sub revelation it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here. Yeah. Then according to Hans rule, you need to fill in these, these degenerating optos. They are called degenerating optos because they have the same energy. You need to fill them one by one with parallel spins. One by one with parallel spins. So let's start here. One, one, this is according to Hans rule. One, 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 so this is how many? This is now five. So but then we have nine, so one, 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 this is how many? Nine, this is nine. So now we are remaining with this one unpaired directly. So this one is unpaired. So according to Hans rule, these, they are generating optos, they have the same energy, meaning they should have the same number of what? Of spins. So meaning to make this one complete, we need to borrow one from, from the highest energy level. So we need to borrow one from what? 4S. So when we borrow one from 4S, meaning here we remain with what? 1, and we add here to what? 10. So this one will be complete. So this is the electronic configuration for copper. So we need to borrow one, so that it can be stable. So let's do for chromium as well. So let's go, let's do for chromium as well. So let's do for chromium as well. So these are the two exceptions. And these, they will usually examine you on these because they know these are the exceptions. You can't just go direct. So let's do for chromium, which is CR system point. So let's start, start with one. One S to the power T, two. Two S to the power. Then from two S to go to what? Two P to the power. Then from 2p you go to what? 3s. 3s to the power t. From 3s where do you go? 3p. 3p to the power t. The power is away counting. So this is 18. Then from 3p where do you go? 4s. 4s to the power. Then this is how many now? This is 20. Then we are remaining how many? 4. Then we go to 3, which is 3d to the power t. The power 4. And here, when you draw the optical diagram, well, this is the D. So it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, meaning, according to Hans rule, you need to fill them one by one with parallel what? spins. Let's start. 1, 2, 3, 4. So, and these degenerating orbitals, they have the same energy. They have equal energy. So, meaning, we need another spin here. Because these are generating orbitals. We need another spin here. We need another spin here. So now we need to borrow one again from this highest energy level. We need to borrow one here. When you borrow one here, you remain with what? One, 
Then you have Duarte, five men who have Duarte. So these unpaired electrons is what we call paramagnetic. These unpaired electrons is what we call paramagnetic. And if they are all paired, these paired ones, we call them, they are magnetic. The unpaired ones, they are paramagnetic. And these what? They are magnetic. So this is how you write the electronic configuration for each and every element. And these two copper and chromium, they are exceptions. You need to borrow one from S. You need to borrow one from S. You need to borrow one from S. So now, let's go there and let's, let's go to how to draw the optodactyls. How to draw optodactyls. What about this one? Before you believe this one, what about this one? Let's go for that one for iron. Let's go for iron. What if they say you, they return to draw the to write the electronic combination for ion plus, plus 3 or plus 2? Plus 2. Plus two. So, so now we know that ion has got how many electrons? So ion has got how many electrons? 26 electrons. 26 electrons. And we are told to write the electronic configuration for ion plus 2. So this plus 2 means you need to subtract 2 from 26. You need to subtract 2 from 26 because it is losing electron, electron. So you need to subtract 2 from what? 26. And here is what you do. You don't subtract from here. First, you need to write the full electronic configuration for R for I with 26 electrons. So let's write, let's start to be 1 s to the power T, 2, 2 s to the power T, 2, then you go to R T, 2 p to the power T, 6. From 2 p you go 3 s. To the power 2, from 3s you go to what? 3p to the power 6, from 3p right you go? 4s to the power t, 2. So how many are there now? This is 10, this is 20. Then from 4s right you go? 3d to the power t, 3d to the power t, 6. So you have 6? Okay. So 2, 4, 26. Right. So now we are told that this ion is ion plus 2. So meaning we need to subtract 2. So meaning the number of electrons that we need for ion plus 2 is what? 24 electrons. 24 electrons. And where do you subtract that, that 2 electrons to make 24? Where do you subtract? You don't just subtract from here, you don't just go here and subtract 2 here. No. You need to subtract from the highest energy level. So which one is the highest energy level here? It's 4s. Always subtract from the highest energy level. You don't subtract from anywhere. If you subtract 2 from here, you ask them to be correct. So you need to subtract from the, what? the highest energy level. So meaning this one will go at 0. So, so the, the new electronic configuration will be 1s to the power 2, 2s to the power 2, 2p to the power 6, 3s to the power 2, 3p to the power 6, 4s to the power 0, 3g to the power t. This is the electronic configuration for what? For ion plus 2. For ion plus 2. So here, if here it was minus, meaning you need to add, you need to add. If it is plus, meaning it is losing. If it is minus, meaning it is gaining. So for minus, you, you add. For plus, you, sub, you subtract. So now let's go directly to optical diagrams. Let's go direct to optical diagrams. Let's go direct to optical diagrams here. Let's go direct to optical diagrams. Let's go direct to optical diagrams. Okay. So, what if we are told to draw the optical diagram for aluminium plus 3? We are told to draw the electronic configuration for aluminium plus 3. So aluminium has got how many electrons? 13 electrons. So meaning you need to subtract 3 from what? From? You need to subtract 3 from 13. So first, before you subtract, you can draw the normal electronic configuration. Configuration for aluminium. What is it? 1s to the power 2. 2s to the power 2. 2p to the power. C is how many? 10. Then where do you go? 3s. 3s to the power. Then here, 
Three feet the three feet? The power one. So this is how many? 13. But here is plus three. So maybe we need to subtract what? Three. Where do you subtract? You subtract that three from the highest energy levels. So here, the highest energy level is what? This one first, then this one second eye. So maybe we subtract one here and we subtract two here, two here. Meaning our electronic configuration will be this one here. Two B. One S to the power two. Two S to the power two. 2p to the power t, 6. So meaning they are 10. When we subtract 2, 3 from 13, this is 10. So meaning here are dealing with 10 electrons. So meaning you need to draw the, the optal diagram for, for this. So how do you draw the optal diagram for this? So the easiest method to draw the optal diagram is this. This is the easiest method. And this one is direct here. So you start from here. You start from the lowest energy level. So this is 1, this is 1s, one then here, this is what? 2s, then from 2s where do you go? You go to how many? 2p, and 2p can hold out how many electrons? 6. So this one can hold 2, this one 2, so if it is 6 it will be 1, 2, 3. So this one can hold 2, this one 2, this one 2, this is what? 2p. Here we add as what? 2p. So here, I'll explain all the principles here. All the principles here. So the first principle, I'm going to have about principles. Just that you need to fill in the lower energy level before you fill in the high energy level. So mean this one, they need to be completely filled before you fill in the what? The high energy level. So here you need to give them full. One, two. One, two. So this is according to half bar principles. You need to fill in lower energy level before you fill in the what? The high energy level. This is half bar principle. But here, these are the generating orbitals, meaning they have the same energy. Then here, according to Hans rule, you need to fill in the generating orbitals one by one with parallel spins. You need to fill in the generating orbitals one by one with parallel spins. So you need to start but we don't get six. You can give them two, two, two. No. But I got hands rule. No. You can't. You can't say one, two. No. I got to hands rule. You need to give them one each with parallel spins first. One each with parallel spins. Let's start here. Say one. Again here come one. Here come one. Then now how many are we making? Up three. How many are we making? Three. Then again we can start giving them one. One, one. So meaning it's now what complete. So this is the optal diagram for aluminium plus three. This is the optal diagram for aluminium plus three. So this is the optal diagram for aluminium plus three. So almost all the optal diagrams, this is how you draw them. Almost all the optal diagrams, this is how you draw them. This is how you draw all the optal diagrams. This is how you draw all the optal diagrams here. So you need to be careful with this. This is how you draw the optal diagram. So from this you can draw any optal diagram. So, so if here it was, it was still going here, meaning here we have what? This is 2s. Then from 2s where do you go? This is 3s. 3s from 3s where do you go? 3p1, 2. This is what? This is 3p1. From 3p, where do you go? You got 4s. You got 4s. This is 4s. From 4s, where do you go? 3p. From 3, g, g, g can hold up to how many? 10. 10, so it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is what? 3g. So they go on and they go on. So the most important thing you need to know how to write the electronic configuration, then you need to be very simple here. Then it will be very simple going forward. So here you can make you can draw the, the optal diagram for N. If you just follow these simple steps here. You can draw for N if you just follow these simple steps here. Okay? So from here, I need to explain. So here I'll leave a question on this so that you can answer. But here I need to explain another principle, which is power principle of what? 
exclusion. Yeah. So you need to understand the power of principle of what? Exclusion. So to explain this, let me explain this using a diagram. So let me explain this using a diagram here. So let me explain this using a diagram here. So according to the power of principle of exclusion, Newton said no two electrons can have the same four quantum numbers. No two electrons can have all the four types of quantum numbers. No two electrons can have all the set of quantum numbers. So to explain this, let's say, let me let me just go back and say 2p. 2p to the power 6. Let me just get this one. 2p to the power 6 here. So, so meaning this 2 in front here represents the n value, which is 2. And this p here represents what? There's neutral quantum numbers. And what is p? If s is equal to 0, p is equal to what? 1. So p is equal to what? To 1. Then what about this is L now? Which is 1. This is L. So what about ML here? If L is equal to 1, what is ML? L, ML will end between negative 1 to positive what? To positive 1. Okay. So, so let's go to the to the P sub here. Let's say this P can hold up how many? 6, 1, 2, 3. So let's start. 1, 1, 1, then again. 1, 1, 1. They are what? They are how many now? They are 6. They are 6 now. Okay? They are 6. So how many electrons do we have here? 6. So to find the magnetic spin numbers here, you need to come here. How many electrons are there? 6. So you need to start counting up to 6. Let's start counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this 6 the electron is facing where? Yeah. Down. So if it is facing down, it's negative. If it is facing up, it's what? Positive. So this MS here of what? Negative. Yeah. So we have seen that there is no So I've seen that they are all different here. They have, they have seen that they are all different here. That is power of principle of exclusion. They can't be the same. No two electrons can have the same four type of what principal numbers. I've seen they are all different. That is power of principle of exclusion. They can't be the same. So that is power of principle of what exclusion. Okay? So I've explained this principle here. So I need to explain something else. Hence the principle of what uncertainty. Hence the principle of what uncertainty. So hence the principle of what uncertainty. Hence the principle of what? Principle of what? Of uncertainty. Uncertainty. Okay. So what is this principle here? Hence the principle of certainty. Here is test that in. you can never know both the position and the momentum with precision, right? So you can never know both, both the position and the momentum of an electron with precision or with absolute certainty. You can never know both simultaneously, right? You can never know. So you can never know. So here you can never know both the position and the momentum of an electron with precision or with absolute certainty. So you can never know simultaneously. So And the momentum 
precision. So you can never know both the position and the momentum of an electron with precision or absolute certainty. So this is the end field of uncertainty. Uncertainty. So here, let me, before, before we move to the next topic, so let me explain certain things here. So, so let's talk about the nature of what energy and electrons are and electrons. of energy and what and electrons. So here we are being told that an electron, an electron can act uh, both as a wave and a what and a particle. So an electron can behave as a wave and also as what as a particle. So there are two properties there. Let's talk about the properties. So let's talk about the properties there. So properties that we explain that that an electron can behave both as a particle as what and as a wave. So the first one is let's talk about interference. Interference and what and refraction. And refraction. So this on interference and refraction. So this one describes. Or explains, describes the way of nature. The way of nature of what? Of an electron. So the interference and refraction will describe the way of nature of what an electron. The second one, the photoelectric effect. Let's talk about the photoelectric effect. The photoelectric effect and the scattering of light, okay? And the scattering of light. Scattering of light. So this one explains. This one explains. So if they tell you to explain two properties that will describe the direct nature of energy and electron, these are the two. So, so the one that will explain, that will describe the wave nature of the electron is the interference and refraction, right? And the one that will describe the, the particle nature is the photoelectric effect and the scattering of light. So these are the two properties you need to know them. So these are the two properties you need to know them. Thank you for watching. So we have done with atomic structure. We have done with the parts of atomic structure. The next time we meet, we'll solve questions on this. Thank you.